Hey guys, welcome back. Uh, I've got a rain day today, so um, I thought it'd be a good day to take a look at a couple computers I've had in the shop. We've got some thunder out there, so we're we'll hanging out with Queenie the shop dog today. Uh, she's not too scared of thunder, but she sticks right by me whenever there is some. But anyways, on to these PCs. Uh, these are both Micron PCs from the mid-90s, I'm going to say. Uh, this one's Micron Home MPC, and this one just says Micron. I don't know anything about these. I know I was at at a uh, friend's house a couple years ago, and we went and looked in his dad's barn, and these computers were in there. And you know, I asked if he's going to do it, and he says, "Well, yeah, he'll probably let you have them." And uh, a couple years later, he just called me up and said, "Hey, uh, I've got those computers in my truck. That if I drop them off to you." And uh, I said, "Sure." And they've been here for a couple months now. I haven't done anything with them, but you can tell they're pretty grungy so i don't know if these are going to work or not but you know we're going to open them up take a look you know check each one out and we're, we're going to find out in the end so, all right let me get one of these off here and we'll start taking a look at one first i think we'll look at this home mpc one first all right we're taking a look at the home mpc and you see we've got a uh, 32 speed uh, cd-rom a couple blank covers a uh, floppy drive power button reset in our intake and it's got a couple of you know scuffs on it but overall I mean the case doesn't look too terrible um, and I believe these cases are all plastic on these all the feet are intact let's spin it around take a look at the back quick these micron PCs are the true potato PCs made in Idaho and uh, as you see it's looking pretty bad back here there's quite a bit of corrosion on everything. We got a couple serial ports, parallel port, uh, PS2 for mouse and keyboard. Uh, we do have a VGA card, um, modem, and we've got a sound card in here and a bunch of grunge on the bottom of it. And one thing I noticed is this uh, plastic strip across here that's got these two little locking tabs. It kind of holds this part together. It's still pretty intact. Um, a lot of times you'll see these tabs broken off on these. But we do have a thumb screw up here, which is still intact as well. There we go. And then the cover should just lift straight off. That's honestly not as dirty on the inside as I had thought. Uh, looks like we do have a socket 5 motherboard sound blaster sound card there's our modem and our GPU is a number nine I, don't, I have no idea which model that is we'll have to take a look at it and we do have a hard drive installed yeah just one um, I think before I do anything though I think I'm going to start taking parts out of here and, and get that power supply down to uh, just to isolate this power supply and we'll turn the power supply on make sure everything works uh, this does look like, yeah, this is uh, an AT power. And I do see a bunch of RAM in there. So yeah, this will be interesting. Uh, hopefully, uh, we can get this power supply working. If this power supply works, then we'll see if the motherboard and all the other stuff works on it. Now, judging by the outside of these, I actually expected the inside to be a lot dirtier than it is. Especially that it's been in a barn for years. I thought there'd be all kinds of critters making homes in it. Um, so I, I'm actually pretty surprised that it's as clean as it is in here. I mean, it is dirty. You can talk about the cables, but there's no, like, rat's nests or, you know, bug nests or anything like that in here. Alright, so we got the sound card out, and it's a uh, it's an ISA slot, Sound Blaster 16, it's a model CT2960, and it's got a Vibra chip on it. We also have an ISA slot modem, uh, US Robotics 1997, and we have a PCI video card, S3 Trio 64, it does have the extra memory slots populated. And it's S3 video chip on there, but this is uh, 
the company I manufactured this was uh, number nine. All right, so here you can see our socket five. Um, I don't know what CPU is in here, uh, but it's got a little heat sink and a little tiny fan on it, which is kind of cool. Uh, SIS chips on the uh, motherboard. And there's a bunch of RAM in there. All four slots are populated. We have three PCI slots and four ISA slots, but one of these is a shared slot. All right, so we got the power supply disconnected from everything in the computer. We have power hooked up to that. We have a hard drive hooked up for load. And uh, being that the, the motherboard doesn't switch this on, the, this is directly connected to the switch on the front panel. All we gotta do is hit that switch on the front panel and with the load, we'll know if this uh, power supply actually works or not. But we'll know if it turns on and then I'll have to just test to make sure the voltages are good. So let's go ahead and find the power switch here. Right, power supply is running, so that's that's a good sign. All right, let me find my multimeter and we'll check voltages and hopefully uh, hopefully everything looks good and then we can put this back together and see if it actually works. All right, so with everything running now, uh, we should be able to do some tests and just make sure we've got proper voltages on here. This has a uh, five volt rail, twelve volt rail, and negative five and negative twelve. Uh, we're going to mainly look at the uh, 5 volt and the 12 volt rail. Just make sure we've got 5 volts and 12 volts. 5.28, so 5 volt looks good. Ten point two, so our 12 volt is not quite 12 volts. Um, Pretty far from it actually. Let's check this one here. Yeah, we're 10.2. We're low on our 12 volt side. All right, so just to rule out that uh, the hard drive did, that was hooked up to it didn't have too much draw, um, I just hooked up a, a more modern uh, IDE hard drive to it. And uh, as you see, we're still at 10.8 volts. So voltage is low on the 12 volt side of this. So. Uh, I think I'm going to have to find a different power supply. Uh, maybe I'll check the one in the other computer there too. We'll just have to use one power supply for now to test both if that one even works. Uh, hopefully we can get one of these to work because uh, if not, we can't test anything else on this computer. So um, cross your fingers and uh, we'll find out. Alright, so here's the other one. I'm going to take a look at this one quick. and It, it looks uh, almost identical to the other one. We do have a, we have a ladybug there. This has got quite a bit more rust and stuff on it. Uh, we have our, our modem here. Um, I don't know what, uh, we have a different sound card in this one and uh, another GPU. But other than that, everything else looks pretty much the same. Um, but we're going to open this one up and see. I did notice this has got a busted latch right here, but this part's still intact, believe it or not. Um, we're going to see what's inside of this one. Hopefully, this one isn't full of critters. Uh, hopefully, it's nice and clean like the last one. I do see a bit more corrosion on this one, so uh, I'm not quite sure what to think right now. But let's get it open to find out. Alright, this one does look very similar to the other one on the inside. This is also a, uh, this one's a Socket 3. So this is a slightly older computer. Uh, there's no hard drive in this one. Um, this one does have a big Sound Blaster 16 in it, uh, CT1740, and I'm not sure what we got for a VGA card here. Uh, we'll have to pull it out, but we're going to disconnect everything on here and test this power supply too and see if this one works. It's actually cleaner inside than I thought too. I think everything on the outside is mainly just from sitting in the barn. Uh, the insides are pretty clean on these. Right, so I'm pulling the cards out. I did find this something uh, I dragged some kind of insulation or something in there for a nest. Um, I don't know how it got in there. You know, the holes seem big enough, but you never know. But anyways, uh, the uh, video card on this one is a Service Logic uh, PCI card. Um, big, big old uh, ISA Sound Blaster 16.
1992. And another modem. All right, so as I said, this one is a little different. This one is a, a socket three. Still no idea what CPU is in there. Um, all the memory slots are populated on this one. No idea how much. Both of these I noticed have a um, uh, like this real time uh, clock module right here which is a battery that I'm sure is shot but they do look like they're socketed on because they've got a zip tie around them um, yeah this one's got you know some fancy work done on it sometime in the past uh, we have one two three four five six ISA slots and three PCI one of these being shared again but Intel chipset but we're mainly interested in, in a power supply right now see if we can get a good working power supply so let me get that set up and test that all right, so bad news, guys. This power supply seems to be completely dead. No sign of life. All right, so I'm a dumbass. I, I got the power supply pulled out and uh, still wouldn't turn on. And on the back, there's a switch right here. Right now it's at 115. That was, for some reason, set to 230. And uh, now we've got like 11.6 volts on a 12-volt rail with a uh, hard drive hooked up for a draw. So I think we're good to go. I think I'm going to take this apart though and clean it. I see a lot of crap trying to blow out of there. So I'm going to take that apart and clean it. And then we're going to put it back in and see. Uh, we'll, we'll test both computers with it. The other one I know has got a low 12 volt rail. So we're not going to use that. But we're going to see if uh, either, either one of these Micron PCs work. Alright, so I got the power supply back in. We have uh, just a hard drive hooked up. So maybe we can listen to it. we got a monitor hooked up here. And... Uh, power switch is just hanging here you gotta be really careful with these because these do just disconnect the mains power so uh definitely don't want to touch the wrong thing there and uh let's go ahead and see if it fires up now and we see the cpu fans spinning hard drive started to make some noise the power lights on on the motherboard surprisingly i didn't hear it beep there's a pc speaker on the front i did you know, double check everything everything's hooked up good there and we've got nothing so this thing kind of doesn't want to post right now so let me dick around with it a bit and see if we can get it to post all right so i tried a lot of different things here uh different uh, video card uh switch you know different combinations of the ram uh tested with different ram the only thing i did test with cpu but i did pull the cpu out and check it and that is an uh, i486 DX4100, so uh, that's a nice CPU in there. And I'm sure the CPU isn't the issue. Uh, I did notice that if you look back there in the corner, there is some corrosion like on that screw. So we may have to take this motherboard out and, and clean it. But I'm not going to do that right now. Uh, I think right now what I'm going to do is pull this power supply back out. And we're going to set the other uh, Micron computer up here, in, in the socket 5, and uh, see if that one will work. So this one, when I turned it on, or when I plugged in, it actually turned on and it made a uh, a beep. So that was a good thing. But I didn't see anything on the screen. So I went and I just replaced this with a CRT monitor. Because I don't know if that other monitor is any good. And this monitor I know is good. Uh, so I do have a keyboard hooked up to it since we did get a beep out of it. Now we're going to actually go through and see what it does. We should get a couple beeps here. Pause the screen here and see what this says. All right, Pentium 100, 32 megs of RAM. System battery is dead. That we know. Real time clock error because it's on that. This one has that same module as the other one, so we're gonna have to do something about that. Um, but this one has also got a zip tie around it. You can probably see it back there. So it's probably socketed in there, which will make it a lot easier. Uh, let's go to setup here. All right, so we have a Phoenix BIOS. Uh, <coughs> it's crazy the date on there, despite the battery being dead, it says uh, 211 of 2013. Um, all right, let's go ahead and just see if uh, I have that hard drive hooked up the power but no cable. I'm going to hook a cable up to it 
and uh, we'll see if this thing actually has windows on it or if this hard drive even works. It sounded like it was working, so uh, we'll find out. That's a good sign that I can get this all taken apart and cleaned up now. And uh, yeah, we can actually we can actually see if we can get this thing restored. All right, so a couple things. Um, I'm trying to get the CPU out of here, and it's the, the lever gets stuck right there. This uh, this part won't slide back to unlock the pins. So I'm not even going to try to take the CPU out. This thing is just plastic. I don't want to bust it. I'm trying to get the CPU out. Uh, the CPU, you know, is the one that did work. Uh, another interesting thing is the the heat sink that's on here. You know, it's got this piece that, you know, it snaps on there. I'm not going to snap it on right now. But, all right, as you see, the heat sink just threads down into there. So you just thread it down until it makes contact with the chip and, you know, screw your fan on there. So I thought that was pretty cool. And of course, it's got this, you know, little tiny fan that goes on it there. That's a pretty cool setup. And the front of the case actually did have a fan that had this little guy right here. And here's the stamping inside the case for the manufacturer of this case. Uh, looks like A TCH Company Limited, uh, 1994. And on the bottom of the case, uh, we can see the manufacturer's label with the model number and the date of manufacture. 1996 all right so here's on that I've got everything pretty much put back together the hard drive is not disconnected because it's kind of kind of pointless because of that uh, real-time clock battery chip module right there uh, I've got to replace that it won't when you go in, you got to go into the BIOS and uh, you can automatically select the hard drive and it'll it'll select it and as soon as you restart it's gone again it acts like there's no hard drive in there um, the, uh, unfortunately, this uh, S3 Trio, which ain't, I guess ain't a big deal, this number 9 branded uh, S3 Trio 64 does not work. I couldn't get a signal out. So, and, you know, these fans, of course, you know, this is just tied into Molex, so, you know, they spin at full speed. Both of these, this one and the front one there, they just hum away at full speed. I mean, for the most part, everything seems to be working. I can't do much with it. I can't. You know, install Windows or anything like that yet, but I guess, you know, I, I feel an accomplishment has been made because I got the inside all cleaned up. Yeah, I was able to test the floppy drive, and uh, that, that works. I don't have to replace that, which is nice. I mean, it's not going to go through with the install for DOS here because, like I said, it, it won't read the hard drive until I fix that battery on there. But let me get the case back on it. I got that all cleaned up and uh, the front cover, and uh, we'll take one final look at it for today. I'm sure you remember what it looked like before at the beginning of the video, and you can see it looks a hell of a lot cleaner now. There's still a couple little marks on it that um, I don't have a magic eraser right now. Or if they are, I don't know where, if I do, I don't know where they're at. But um, yeah, I mean, it cleaned up. There are a couple little scuffs on here. But yeah, the whole thing cleaned up really good. Uh, the interesting thing is, you know, that the. This section is one piece, and this is like a separate piece, but you can't take them off. The front panel and and the, you know this side and the top have yellowed some, and this one didn't. So it's and it's kind of cool. This does have an air intake on the side as well, and on the back you can see. I mean, it's not perfect. There's some corrosion on there, but I did clean this up. And uh, we'll get the sound blaster installed and put these back on as soon as I fix that um, that battery and that real time chip. And, there's the uh, card that came with it, and there's the sound blaster that we'll put in. But I guess that, that is all that I can do for today. I do, uh, I gotta look into that, that real-time uh, module, clock module there with the, with the battery. I know there's uh, replacements for it, but there's also a way to add a, like a coin cell battery. You know, you disconnect the one that's inside there and add one to it. So I gotta look into that and see if I'm gonna do something like that. And uh, once that's done, you know, we'll come back and we'll get Windows 95 loaded on here and uh, play around with it a bit. All right, guys, uh, it, we got thunderstorms here, so uh, I'm going to get going. You guys take care. I'll see you on the next one.